Hello everybody. So today I'm going to be doing some fitness testing. I'm going to be doing run fitness testing and the plan for today is I'm going to be using my Koros Pace 2 and I'm going to use the fitness uh, test function for the run to get a good baseline preseason. So it's going to give me some useful information as I head into the bulk of training season. It's going to ask for your most recent 10k time. And I'm gonna use my 10K time from the last triathlon I did, which was uh, 34.11. And so I'm gonna go 34 minutes. And basically the test is gonna consist of uh, one 25 minute steady run. And it says anywhere from 6.10 to 5.38 pace. And then test two is gonna be three minutes from 5.38 to 5.06 pace, somewhere in between in that range. It's a kind of a, a wide range, but we'll see. And then the last test is going to be three minutes at 5.06 or faster. Uh, so that's gonna be 31 minutes. I'm gonna do it on the track. So it's an even surface, flat, and I can reproduce it if I want. So I don't know, we'll see what happens and uh, I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, so it's a couple days after I did the fitness test and spoilers, not spoilers, um, and it didn't work. Uh, I didn't do it exactly correctly, and I'm going to explain why. So, there is three fitness stages that it tells you to complete, like I said earlier in the video, and I did complete those stages, and I'll tell you what my pace and heart rate was for those stages, but I did not reach a high enough percentage of my max heart rate for it to be done, for the fitness test to be finished. So it wanted me to continue doing another fitness stage, a fitness test stage, in order to reach a certain percentage of my max heart rate. 
so that I could finish doing its calculations, which I didn't know going in, and I had thought that I had looked and read into it and looked on the website before going into it, which is a little frustrating, but I am still going to be able to use the data from the fitness test. So it's not a complete wash, and I'm going to talk about what data I'm going to extrapolate from this test. So it, the Koros, the app, is saying that it's going to estimate your threshold heart rate, your threshold pace, and your your max heart rate. And I'm still going to be able to get my threshold heart rate and my threshold pace, um, an estimate, um, a rough, f f rough estimate from this test. <clears throat> so for my 25 minutes steady, the first test, I averaged a 550 per mile pace and at a heart rate, an average heart rate of 171 beats per minute. So for the second fitness test, I averaged 520 per mile pace for three minutes at a heart rate of 174. And then for the final one, for the third fitness test, I averaged about a five flat pace for three minutes at a average heart rate of 174. So I think that, I believe personally from what I felt that my heart rate was higher than 174 beats per minute. I don't know if it was an issue with my heart rate strap, if it wasn't detecting a higher heart rate. I'm gonna go ahead and believe what my heart rate strap says and what the data says and that I just couldn't get my heart rate high enough. But I highly doubt that I was below a 180 because um, I was I was really pushing it. I was struggling. Um, so that's a little weird. But anyways, I that's why I think it didn't really work for me. So that being said, let me tell you how I'm going to use the data. So threshold heart rate and threshold pace. I'm going to go ahead and say that that 25 minutes steady is a good benchmark and a good place for my threshold. That is just about where my threshold is and based off of some calculations that you can do. So I know what my max heart rate is. I have a max heart rate of 190 beats per minute and that's from previous fitness testing and it holds up pretty well across like workouts that I do. And generally what you can do is you can take your max heart rate. If you know it, you should, should go out and test it. Uh, and you can take a percentage of your max heart rate and that will give you a good estimate of what your threshold heart rate is. So I'm taking about 90% of my max heart rate is about a 170 or 171. So 90% of 190 is about 170, 171. And my pace at that average heart rate was 550 per mile pace. So that is my threshold heart rate and my threshold pace on a flat track surface. And that is going to be useful for me to kind of benchmark uh, heading into the future. How am I gonna structure my workout plans? How am I gonna structure my intervals? And how am I going to make sure that I'm not either working hard enough or I'm not working too hard? And, and so it's gonna help me hit that kind of, that sweet spot. Uh, everybody's gonna be different with thresholds. Um, the more trained you are, the more efficient you are going to be. So the closer to your heart rate max, the, the closer your threshold uh, heart rate is going to be to your heart rate max. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, this is the first time I've kind of done truly some, some uh, run fitness testing. If you are from the biking background, you know that there's the FTP test. is a pretty standard test that um, most cyclists do. And I've done those the last couple of years and I'm probably going to do it again this year. But fitness testing is really important to help you understand where you are starting and to help give you a benchmark as you progress through your season so that you can understand how you are progressing, if you are progressing, and maybe how you might not be progressing. 
And it also helps you structure your workouts accordingly so that you're not structuring something that is going to be too hard or something that is going to be too easy. And so once you have, once you've been fitness testing for a couple of years, a couple of months, you know, in a row, um, then you can go back and look at how you've progressed or maybe what's, what's worked and what hasn't worked, which is, is good. You want to have some, some good personal data of, um, how you're progressing. That's fitness testing. So I think it's a good feature on the Koros to, to have. Um, I think that there's probably better ways that you can go about fitness testing, um, on your own, but it's, uh, it's something that if you don't really know much about fitness testing or heart rates and stuff, uh, it's something easy that you can use on your watch. So I think that's going to be it. Um, that is Coros fitness test. Uh, it didn't really work out, but that's fine. Uh, cause it's still some useful data. So thank you guys for watching this video. Goodbye.